Welcome to Rudy's Common Sense. Of course, I'm Rudy Giuliani, and this is another episode of Common Sense, and we're doing it really just a few hours after the results in the 2020 election were announced, to the extent they were announced. So we're at the point where uh, Republicans have uh, pulled off a dramatic bellwether win in Virginia. Those are the words of Vice President Harris, by the way, that Virginia would be a bellwether for 2022 and 2024. She may regret having said those words. Where the race in uh, New Jersey is dead even with a slight lead for Chiarelli, something totally, totally surprising and shocking, particularly to Democrats. Uh, Remember, Biden, less than a year ago, won Virginia by 10 percent and New Jersey by 16. So Yunkin has now won Virginia by two and a half percent. And uh, Cirelli is tied slightly ahead in uh, New Jersey. Of course, there was the race in New York, never expected to be a Republican victory. And uh, it wasn't. It, It had to deal with, I mean, the Republican there, Curtis Sliwa, had to deal with a six or seven to one Democrat uh, edge, and compared to when I ran, uh, a much more left wing, a much more radical uh, Democrat base. After all, they elected de Blasio twice in a row, and de Blasio is pretty close to an acknowledged socialist or communist. and then there were some other victories that, that, that will tell you things about uh, the national scene, like the defeat in Minnesota of the defund the police, get rid of the police department uh, movement. There was a proposition on the ballot to get rid of the Minnesota police department and to get rid of a police chief in Minnesota to substitute some kind of an institute <laughs> for public safety. Um, and to have no police chief and to have the city council, which is, it could probably fit very, very well into um, some kind of a uh, legislative body in China or, or, uh, or Venezuela, uh, to, pick the, to pick the police commissioner, uh, basically addressing crime with social workers rather than the police. This went down to a pretty handy defeat by the people of uh, Minneapolis uh, who might well have voted for this a year ago. Certainly, they would have voted for it at the height of the Floyd uh, uh, incident and the aftermath of it and the riots that took place. Uh, and, but it really, I think, doesn't mark the end of the defund the police movement, but it sure puts a very, very uh, abrupt break on it. So by and large, throughout the country, there was a massive rejection of the uh, Biden express train to Marxism in almost every respect. Virginia is probably the most traumatic because the issue in Virginia is replicated in almost every state, county, village and town in America because it uh, permeates the public schools. The public schools are not controlled by, um, by and large, by the government. They're not controlled by the even school board. They're controlled largely by the teachers' union and the education industry, the NEA, the National Association of School Boards. Remember, it was the National Association of School Boards that conspired with the Biden administration behind everyone's back uh, to get the attorney general to turn into political hack and write a letter threatening parents with being domestic ter- being prosecuted as domestic terrorists under the Patriot Act without citing a single incidence of violence, a single incidence of terrorism, a single incident of anything. And, and to this date, the attorney general has been invited to produce some example that would support such an, uh, an astounding letter written so quickly such as that, and he's unable to do it clearly shows the political muscle of the education industry. Now, they run schools throughout America. So Virginia, as you know, uh, is best known now for the, for, for the mistake that was made 
by Terry McAuliffe in the debate in late September when he pronounced almost matter of factly that parents should have no role in education. And he said it so matter of factly, <laughs> so easily, that it was as if we must all agree with that. Meaning not just his own rabid left wing, now pretty close to Marxist uh, uh, followers, but all of us. But somehow we all agree that parents should have no role in education and that the education bureaucrats and apparatchiks should decide on the education of our children. It shows you how removed the left, the socialists, the Marxists are from the reality of America. Uh, because in most circumstances, uh, that, that mistake would have been rectified with uh, a statement like, well, I didn't mean to say it quite that way. They shouldn't interfere in a negative way or uh, they shouldn't be the sole arbiter. The teachers, after all, have to be considered. That's what I meant. I just went too far. If he did that, he might have won the election. Of course, he would have been lying if he did it. He told the truth. This is what they believe. That's why he doubled down on it. That's why Biden came there uh, and Harris and supported him. They didn't see any problem with what he said. They didn't make him corrected or corrected in their own speeches. Or That's why Harris announced it was a bellwether. I mean, she was sure they were going to win. <laughs> she looks like a jerk today, right? And that's why uh, uh, Obama, the great prince of the Democrat Party, was taken from behind the curtain and brought out. And he almost specifically endorsed it by talking about how frivolous and how uh, uh, meaningless the re Republican issues were, meaning these parents, these pesky parents, bringing up problems like uh, teaching their children that all white people are evil or that they themselves are evil as whites and that um, America was born as a racist country and has always been a racist country, and that we're an evil country because we're systemically racist. Or um, coming home and telling their parents that uh, today my teacher asked me, uh, do, do I feel more like a boy or a girl? Hmm? So this is what drove the issue in, in, in Virginia and change the race completely. And the issue we're talking about now, and the reason this is so important and so uh, important to us who, who want to fight to regain our rights, save our country, save our way of life, uh, how we've got to understand this because they don't. Why don't we pause? I accomplished a lot in 2020 exposing the truth establishing the relationship with you, working tirelessly for America. And I came to know the work and value of the people at American Hartford Gold. You see, you buy gold not only for what you know, but you buy gold for what you don't know. American Hartford Gold is the company you can trust when it comes to buying gold. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside of your IRA. In the precious metals industry, they are the highest rated firm in our country with an A-plus from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. Give them a call and tell them Rudy sent you. And be sure to ask them what I bought. And if you call them right now, they will give you up to $1,500 of free silver on your first order. Folks, these are uncertain times. The one thing you can count on to protect what you have worked so hard for is physical gold and silver. So don't wait. Call them now. Call 833-GOLD-777. That's 833-GOLD-777. Or text RUDY to 65532. Again, that's 833-GOLD-777. Or text RUDY to 65532. When that issue emerged in the way that it did, even before, um, even before Merritt Garland uh, electrified it with his threatening fascist uh, type letter in threatening the parents, 
uh, it immediately hit a nerve. Immediately when the parents appeared on television announcing the problems they were having about the teachings of critical race theory and the teachings of uh, gender, let's call it gender doubt. Number one, it frightened parents throughout America. Number two, it resonated with parents throughout America because uh, many of them have had similar experiences because it's being done throughout the public school system. And we, we hear the reaction of the left, particularly the syncophanic, uh, almost now moronic uh, commentators on CNN and MSNBC and saying that uh, there was no critical race theory taught in the public schools in Virginia that uh, was made up by the Republicans because the Republicans are racist. Now, this is belied by just facts that are so clear, you wonder how they can lie so blatantly. On the website of the uh, overall Board of Education in Virginia is a uh, entry that says that uh, critical race theory is correct and that elements of it or critical race theory itself should be taught in the schools. It's recommended to be included in the uh, curriculum. And the gender education piece is specifically contracted for with outside subcontractors who come into the Virginia schools and teach so-called sex education. But the sex education includes, among other things, uh, specifically raising doubts with children about their gender so that they can consider at the age of six or seven or eight if they really feel secure that they're boys. Uh, we've seen uh, videos of it, played them in a podcast, did a re representation of one just in a podcast two weeks ago where something like 70 or 80 percent of the students go into the category of they're in doubt. When in fact, you know, by all indications from time immemorial, it's no more than about 10% of our population that tends to be transgender or homosexual or <laughs> now we're up to 70. Of course, to say that this doesn't go on in the Virginia public schools is to say that I can't remember how many parents came forward. Four or five hundred? Four or five hundred parents are lying. For no reason they're coming forward and saying their, uh, their child was taught that America is systemically racist. Well, of course the child was taught that. The President of the United States says that all the time, in large part because of the virtual teaching during the pandemic became aware of just how terrible the agenda in the public schools is. Now, should they have been aware of it earlier? Yes. I mean, for, for 20 years, if not 30, we have been failing our children. We're failing them in the basics, which is why this becomes even more critical. We don't teach the three R's. We don't. We're anywhere from 28th to 45th in every competitive uh, or comparative uh, analysis of the United States public schools compared to other countries. We should be first, second, third, fourth, 28th to 45th. I mean, we're horrible in math and science, horrible. So we begin with the fact that the public schools don't do the basic job of teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, history, geography, which means that most parents are extraordinarily dissatisfied with the public school education of their child. And you can see it in their extraordinarily strong support for parental choice, particularly in the African-American and Hispanic community, it exceeds 60%. In some uh, polls, it's 65 to 72% of African-American parents want to have a choice so they can take their child out of the public school. And Hispanic parents just a little further behind and white parents just a little further behind. 
And although there are examples of excellent public schools, particularly in the suburbs, when we get to America's cities, the public schools are a disgrace, absolute disgrace. Before we even get to laying on it this Marxist agenda, which has now seeped into most of our schools. So the reaction to this loss in Virginia by the De Democrat Party indicates that there could be no correction here. This is attributed to the racism of Glenn Youngkin and his supporters who falsely raised the issue of critical race theory because critical race theory is not, this is what you keep repeating this, not taught in Virginia. So they created the entry in the website that says you should teach critical race theory in Virginia. They created that. And they uh, paid off all these parents that came forward. Could have been a thousand. Oh, and the teachers who quit because they were being required to teach elements of critical race theory, that whites are inherently racist. Pretty much teach what the president says. That they, uh, were, they, were, they were taught that America was founded really mainly for the main purpose of slavery. They either believe or want you to believe that this was entirely made up by Yunkin and his, his staff and by racist Republicans. This would be a good time to take a short break. How much equity do you have in your home? 50,000, 100,000, more? Cybercrime experts are alerting homeowners that the more equity you have, the greater the chance foreign and domestic criminals will come after you. Title theft is one of the fastest growing crimes. Home Title Lock, America's leader in home title protection, is alerting homeowners. They could already be a victim and not know it. Here's how it goes down. First, cyber thieves search hundreds of public databases for high equity homes. Next, they pull your home's title that's online. They forge your signature stating you sold your home and they take out loans using your equity. You're not covered by insurance. Your bank or common identity theft programs protect your most valuable asset. Register your address now to see if you're already a victim and receive a complete title history of your home, a $100 value free. Go to HomeTitleLock.com. That's HomeTitleLock.com. It's, um, it, it's the only issue they have. I mean, it's the only issue they go to. Everything, is, everything comes back to race. And, and I think what they found out is the American people don't buy it anymore. You know, you can cry wolf only so often. I mean, this is, um, this is absurd. So the question is, after this defeat in Virginia, on this issue, every Republican running in 2022 now knows what the beginning of their program is going to be, right? Embrace the parents. Embrace the parents. Be sternly against any form of racial manipulation in the, in the curriculum of the schools. Be against uh, uh, teachers and bureaucrats supplanting parents in training uh, young children about sex. Uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Make sure that parents have the critical role in education. Oh, and by the way, uh, nobody even bothered to check the fact that what, um, what he said was a completely contrary to the law of Virginia. The law of Virginia makes the parent the final arbiter of the curriculum for the child. And they can veto their child being involved in that kind of curriculum. Of course, it should be that way. Not only is it the law of Virginia, it's basically part of several holdings and dicta in Supreme Court decisions in which uh, the Supreme Court points out that it, a child in America is not a creature of the state. That's in a communist country. See where they're going? And finally, something they should respect, because they don't respect our laws. They don't respect the Supreme Court unless it agrees with them. But they love the United Nations. 
The United Nations Charter on Human Rights says that it's a human right for parents to be able to guide the education of their children. So McAuliffe, who has never been a particularly intellectual or intelligent man or well-read, basically violated Virginia law, Supreme Court decisions, and the uh, United Nations that uh, he and Soros, um, uh, you know, think really should govern us. Now, that's not the only reason he lost, because the other issues were there. And in the exit polling, it looks like the economy was even a bigger issue. And when you look at Virginia, you see the issues go beyond just schools. You see that in, Virgi in, in New Jersey, the issues get to the out of control, completely unprecedented amount of spending that Biden wants to do. Trillions and trillions of dollars, which people in New Jersey know because they're the highest tax state in the country, is going to result in higher and higher taxes. And they have a governor who has the same elitist left wing entitled attitude that McAuliffe has, which he displayed when he said, well, we're a high tax state. You just got to get used to it if you want to live here. Otherwise, move out. Well, people in New Jersey listen to him. They moved out. New Jersey leads the country in the most people moving out in the last three years. Uh, people in New Jersey know because they've experienced what the result of this out of control socialist Marxist spending is. It's a reduction in the tax base and therefore an increase in the burden on you. It's the deterioration of the services in your state. They also have felt the, 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 the impact of the movement toward authoritarianism and fascism that, go, that has gone on in many of the democratic states, in New York, in Michigan, in California, where the governors rule by mandate and dictate. I mean, in, in, in Murphy's case, it, it's had catastrophic and, and fatal results. Uh, Murphy, the governor, the Democrat governor there, has the uh, really pretty much has the distinction of being the worst governor in America. He's per capita lost the most people to COVID. He's per capita lost the most elderly people that he stuffed into nursing homes, even having been warned not to do it to COVID. He's got one of the highest unemployment rates, highest levels of tax, largest per capita movement out of the state. There's almost nothing positive that he's done, but it's pretty much a straight Democrat agenda. And, um, basically tells you that having experienced now only about uh, nine to 10 months of this, I call it express train to socialism, the American people have, have rejected it. This would be the time to take it. Short break. Not long ago, Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow, and his team fit me for my very own MyPillow. They also introduced me to their wide assortment of other incredible products, like their mattress topper, their sheets, towels, slippers, and more. Sleep is incredibly important to me, and I can assume for all of you. It's time you give MyPillow a try and see for yourself. Listeners have helped build MyPillow into the incredible company it is today, and Mike Lindell wants to give back to all of you. You can get great discounts on MyPillow products by going to MyPillow.com right now and seeing each of the specially priced items including those in the radio listener special square. You're going to see rotational offers up to 66% off on products like their pillows, mattress topper, Giza sheets, but also new products like their slippers, weighted blankets, robes, and waffle blankets. All my pillow products come with a 60 day money back guarantee and to promo code Rudy for these great specials. That's MyPillow.com and use the promo code RUDY. Thank you for returning. Well, the question is what will happen now? 
Maybe the best way to look at that is, I'll give you a comparison now of two people in the position they're in. So Biden is in the position of having been delivered a tremendous loss, uh, really um, should have been unexpected, particularly with the recent polls in which his unfavorability has gone up dramatically. I mean, it's now, he's, you know, 10 to 15% more unfavorable than favorable. Uh, the recent poll that 40 to 45 percent of Democrats want another candidate already. Uh, the, the difficulty he had before he left for what was an absurd conference on climate change, where he took hundreds of people. I mean, they could have made a contribution to what they believe is uh, reducing carbon in the atmosphere by not having it. A 400 planes showed up. 400 private planes. He brought his, most of his administration there. To do what? China didn't come. What are you going to do about climate change without China? They're responsible for 30% of it, 40% of it. It could probably eventually be 50%. And while we restrict ourselves, they're going to go to town with, with uh, fossil fuels. I mean, it, it's, it's like a clown show. So he's there. Well, he's getting trashed at the, at, the, at the polls, falling asleep during the conference. And he comes back, and now he's got a choice. And I uh, compare it uh, to a second to the choice that um, Eric Adams has, who has just been elected mayor of New York. So like Biden, er Eric Adams ran as the moderate candidate. Uh, Biden was the answer to Bernie Sanders. He was going to be the more modern, moderate, traditional Democrat. Adams also ran as the law and order candidate to the extent anyone can be a law and order candidate in a Democratic primary. And the more moderate, practical, I don't know what he describes himself as, a, a practical progressive or something like that. If, if, I mean, those two things are mutually exclusive, but that, that's what he says. And he's shown indications that he can go either way. He's talked about reestablishing some form of stop, question, and frisk. He's talked about reestablishing some form of a unit to seize guns. Uh, really, one of the things that was at the core of the record increases in murder last year under the woefully incompetent de Blasio. But he's also given indications that he'll pander to the left. He's uh, very much embraced sanctuary city. And at, at a time in which Biden is sending hundreds and thousands, well, thousands around the country, hundreds, possibly thousands, to the New York area of illegals who haven't been screened for anything. They haven't been screened for COVID, they haven't been screened for drugs, they haven't been screened for possession of fentanyl, they haven't been screened for, they've been screened by the Mexican cartels before they came in. That in addition to the ones that don't, don't get captured at all, of which there probably are another couple hundred thousand. At, that, at this time, with record increases in New York and overdose deaths, two times as many fentanyl. Fentanyl comes directly from the southern border. It comes from China to the Mexican cartels, to New York City. Now, if this guy really knows law enforcement, he knows that. And, and you're saying, we're, send, me, send me more of them? Hmm? You, 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 you're firing the police and the fire for not wearing masks, and you're bringing in thousands of people from the third world that haven't been checked for COVID, and you want me to believe you're not a hypocrite? Every, every time we see you, you got your mask off, but you want children to sit in school rooms for four or five hours a day with the mask on, which is now almost akin to child abuse. So Adam's going to have to make a choice. He's going to have to make a choice between, let's see, Ed Koch, who went, who went to the middle, he was a very left-wing congressman. He became mayor. 
saw that the only way you can succeed as a mayor is to have common sense and make practical decisions, which takes you out of the realm usually of the left wing and progressives who have theoretical solutions that never work. Or will he go in the direction of well, what Biden did? Biden uh, got elected in the primary as the moderate. He was going to calm things down and pretty much restore normal working relations. And if anything, he's been the most left wing socialist, almost to the point of Marxist communist president. Uh, increases uh, that are unthinkable in, in spending, the kind of increases you do when you want to break an economy, proposed taxes that amount to redistribution of Marxist redistribution of wealth, a green program that is completely unrealistic and to the extent that it has been implemented, the, uh, a lot of the cause of our inflation and the price that you pay for gasoline right now. Um, so Biden, you know, pretended to be one way and went the other. So now what is Adams going to do? Is he going to fulfill the expectation that he's going to be a moderate? Or is he going to double cross us the way Biden did, or the way Obama did also? It remains to be seen. And in his case, he could go either way. And he's got the option to do it. Because although he's got a very left wing uh, uh, city council, the mayor of New York has extraordinary power that was given to him after the financial crisis as part of the new charter of New York so that we could avoid bankruptcy. And as an executive in his smaller jurisdiction, he's got more direct power to do things than, than the governor of New York, to a large extent, even the president. So he could do it if he wanted to, or most of it. The, the lefties in his party could block him on some of it. But like Koch, he could fight his way through it, or like me. I mean, I governed completely as a conservative with 45 Democrats and six Republicans in the city council. Biden is a different story. First of all, we don't know if he has any inclination at all to, to do a Clinton, which is to triangulate. I mean, Clinton got his head kicked in in 1993. Right. Uh, then in 94, he got his head kicked in really, really bad. He lost he lost the Congress for the first time in forever and actually started the momentum toward uh, the Republicans controlling Congress since then more than the Democrats. Thank you, Bill Clinton. Never, ever, never able to really straighten that out. It looks like it can happen again uh, next year. But in any event, uh, after the 94 debacle, he brought in Dick Morris and they they triangulated. They did exactly what we were talking about with Adams. They went to the middle. They took over the Republican programs. They ended welfare as you know it. They got the crime bill passed. They lowered taxes to some extent. They became tougher on foreign policy. And by the time you got to the 96 election, they were doing all the things the Republicans were complaining about. Now, is Biden going to do that? Is he going to, is he going to, pull back this ridiculous extra spend. He's already spent too much and gotten us to the highest debt and deficit in the country's history. If he adds a penny to it, he's going to damage us. Is he going to kind of accept the defeat from the moderates in his party? Is he going to slow down the, um, the Marxist agenda and start instituting policies that would be uh, attractive to the moderates in his party and, and, and even the moderate independents. I mean, how about accountability for the welfare spending? How about welfare, welfare, uh, but only in exchange for work, like we did so successfully in New York in the mid '90s, so successfully that the federal government borrowed it from us. Uh, how about accountability just in the spending of the money? As um, Senator Manchin notes, there's no accountability built into the giving out of this two trillion, three trillion, four trillion. When you, when you have no accountability, you end up with rank corruption, which is what happened with the Great Society. I mean, just think about it. 50 years of pumping money into these cities, and they're still a disaster because most of it went into other people's pockets. But nothing built in this bill to stop that. So do things like that with the presently existing program. 
show you can make them accountable. Then you can legitimately ask for possibly more money. And you got to change the police agenda. Boy, if Minneapolis doesn't tell you that, or even the way Adams had to go in order to win, even in extremely left-wing places, then you're really a fool. The question is, first of all, does Biden have the capacity to do it? I mean, Adams does. Adams is a functioning man. <laughs> is Biden functioning? Doesn't look that way. Looks like he's getting worse. I mean, falling asleep at the conference, it's one thing to fall asleep at, you know, just any old conference. This, this is his main priority. And he's, you know, snoring off there twice. And then he's, you know, he's getting things wrong constantly. So does he have the capacity to do it? He certainly doesn't have the capacity to do a Clinton or a Reagan and go sell his program to the country. He couldn't possibly go give three speeches a day the way a Trump could or, or a Reagan could or a Clinton. So he's very limited in his options. Even if he wanted to recalibrate and go to the middle. And then number two, it isn't the Democrat party of Bill Clinton. When Bill Clinton did it, there was no Bernie Sanders. There was no AOC, there was no squad. The media hadn't become hard left to the point of almost being communist and very, very uh, generous toward China in, in a way that suggests both ideological and possibly real corruption. It was a different world. If he were to go there now, if he were to, if he were to do what Clinton did, there'd be a revolution in his party that Clinton didn't face. So it's gonna be very interesting to watch what happens. It's going to be really important to us to keep up with it because don't get complacent. This was a good start, but they've still taken away lots of our rights and they're going to take away more of them unless we fight back. And in future podcasts, we're going to lay out an entire program for how we fight back. But I think this is, the, this is about as good an uh, analysis I can do of an election where all the results aren't in. So give me a little room for a couple of uh, changes if uh, there are some changes in, in what happens with the results. But I think right now the big question that emerges from this is, will Biden make any moves to try to ameliorate the damage that has been done to him and his administration and his party by this election? Or will he attribute it to Republican racism and just keep going where, which, whichever way he's going, which to some extent is going to guide how we respond and how we set up our agenda for next year. But to do that, I want to explain to you in great detail as we put it together, the Freedom Network that we are going to put together so that you and I can participate together in making sure this happens. So that's all for now. But we'll be back in a few days with another episode of Rudy's Common Sense and a follow-up on the Freedom Network. Thank you, and God bless America.